Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to create a shop. You can enter the shop. It'll have its own UI and uh, money so it can buy items from you. You can sell it items. If it doesn't have enough money, it can't buy certain items, stuff like that. There is no limit to what kind of items you can sell to it, um, but we'll get to that in the future. Okay, let's go. All right, we're in Unity 2019.3.9. Uh, I've got an inventory on this. If you need an inventory, you can go ahead and go to my GitHub and get my simple inventory. It'll include all this stuff that you see here. It won't include all these objects and stuff, but it'll have all these scripts, the crafting, inventory, mining, shop, UI, and utility. Okay, let's take a look at the, the simplest things first. We have an interface called the iExchangeable. This is a generic type that's what that T means so we'll put this on whatever items we have to sell to sell okay so this could be a float an int an item all right whatever you want to have uh, be exchangeable in your game then um, you're just gonna implement this interface so I've got my item I'm implementing the interface as an integer because the value of my item is an integer so Implementing that, uh, I'll go ahead and take this out here so you see what that's going to do if I uh, don't have it. So I'll right click, impl implement interface, and now I've ne I need to return a an int. Okay, so I'm just going to return the value of my item. Okay, so you could do that with um, a float and say, for example, you have sent uh, in your game, like, okay, this is two euros and 50 cents. You say, okay, um, 2.5 is uh, what you're returning, all right? So I'm just going to use the most basic thing. I'm using integers. This is the same item that we've had for all the other uh, tutorials in this series. Uh, the only difference is that I've added the integer value, okay? Um, so that's the item. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wallet. This is where we're getting all our money, all right? Uh, both the shop and the player are going to implement this. We have a serialized field for starting money. That'll be set in the start method. Um, we have a an event for money changes. So we'll call that whenever we add or remove money, and that'll help us to update our UI. And we include this change amount just in case you want to do like an animation where you say, oh, plus 500 or whatever, okay? And then we have this bool, which is important, uh, which asks if this um, object can afford a certain amount. Okay, we'll take a look at the wallet UI real quickly. We must have this reference to the wallet, otherwise there's no point in having the uh, the the wallet UI. Okay, so this is a reference that I think a coupling that I think is necessary. We'll have a string for the currency that you uh, want to implement. And then we have the title of the of the wallet holder. So, for example, players' money or shops money, whatever. And then a money text where uh, whenever the there is a money change on the wallet, if you remember that event, um, we'll just update the wallet UI. So, currency symbol plus the money. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and and uh, take a look at that with the wallet real quickly. Um, so I I see. Like, I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, we went from having nothing here and then we update the wallet UI. So my player actually starts with 500. Um, let's go ahead and go into the shop and he's got his own wallet UI here. Uh, if we buy stuff or sell stuff, it'll uh, change. So the, the player doesn't have enough money to buy the alarm clock. So that's why uh, you're not seeing that um, go, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our shopper because this is pretty much the big mover in this. Um, it's got a wallet. It's required to have a wallet and an inventory, okay? Uh, without the inventory of wallet references, we wouldn't be able to add the items that we're buying and or be able to pay for them, okay? We have a reference to our shop, which we'll get from um, entering... Uh, a trigger we we'll use the on trigger enter and on trigger exit callbacks so the player has a uh, sphere collider on him which is a trigger so that's what uh, whenever he enters a, another um, object with a collider on it and this shop tag on it then that'll call the on trigger enter that's why we see uh, right now 
so here you see that it's calling on trigger enter and here uh, he gets out of that sphere collider and that's calling on trigger exit okay so let's take a look at what else he's got um, those actually call these um, enter shop uh, and exit shop methods which uh, fire off these on exit and on enter events okay when we click a um, when we click the item button in the shop UI, it's going to call this event, this uh, method try by item. Okay, so if if the player can afford the item, um, then we'll add it to the inventory and we'll remove the money. All right, and then whenever we click the UI, the button for uh, the player's inventory, um, we'll try to sell that item. Okay, so if we have the shop, if it if we actually have that item in our inventory and then if the um, shop can afford it then we will remove the item from our inventory and add the money to ourselves uh, on the shop it'll automatically if it can buy it then it will remove the money from itself and add the item to its inventory okay and can buy is just asking if it uh, can afford that item it's not checking the type of the items so for example in Skyrim you'd have like a weapon shop or a potions shop or whatever um, this isn't doing that type check alright you can sell whatever type of item to uh, whatever shop you want okay also in the shop we have a wallet we have a reference to our shopper we have a list of shop items okay so I'm just setting the no, the type of I, I'm just giving this shop items from the inspector so let's take a look at that real quickly here's my shopkeeper I've got my items list these are all scriptable objects I'm just gonna pop those a couple of those on there so you'll see now that he's got all five of those items and he's gonna have five each of those okay so pretty basic um, yeah, not not anything special, but uh, this this will work for for prototyping your game. Okay, um, this is the number of slots that we're going to create for the UI. Uh, we have some events that we're not using, but you could use for for example, um, audio. So you could say on enter shop, play the dingling or whatever, um, or like on exit shop, play uh, door closing. Uh, audio or whatever okay we're gonna make sure that we add all those items into the inventory so this is built on the inventory this will call an uh, on the inventory change event and it'll add these items um, to the UI okay all right now selling to the player we're gonna make sure that we actually have a shopper and we're gonna make sure that we have the item that we're trying to sell and then if the shopper can afford it, this is kind of like the same thing we did with the player where we're, we're coming back around and saying, okay, if I can buy this, then I will, All right? So if the shopper can afford it, right, then he'll add it and the shop will add money and remove the item, okay? Pretty simple. Let's take a look quickly at the shop UI. Um, we have a reference to our shopper okay so this is just gonna be our player we're just showing this UI to our user okay so all I did was create the the shop UI put it onto the uh, canvas right and then I dragged and dropped my player onto this script All right, now you'll see that I have another uh, shop UI script here excuse me inventory UI this is the items from the player okay so there are two inventory UIs here um, I've got my own inventory UI for my player so if I press tab you'll see my inventory here it's it's so I've got two instances of the inventory UI in my game because they have different actions right so this is actually showing um, a different slot prefab right so this uses the basic item slot prefab uh, where it only shows the name of the item and, and what it does whereas this one will show you the price that you're gonna get uh, if you sell it to the shop right so let's go ahead and take a quick look at what I'm talking about so we oops 
my bad, if that starts active, then um, we're going to just, when we um, call the on enter and on exit function in shop UI, we're actually only changing um, the state of the inventory. So if it's on, it'll turn off. If it's off, it'll turn on. All right, so that's what that was. Okay, so I don't have any items right now, but right, I'm buying these items. You're going to see I have two inventories. Um, and that's what that's about, okay? So we have two instances of the inventory UI, but they have different actions. So if I click it in my regular inventory, it's going to use the item. Whereas if I click it in, um, let's use something that I have more than one of, okay? So if I click on the house, it'll use the house. But if I click on it here, it's going to, and watch the money here, it's going to sell the house, okay? Um, so yeah, we have we have two different actions for the different inventory UIs, and I'll show you how I implemented that solution. So let's go into the inventory UI, and we're going to see that we have this um, thing called an item action. Now, on a, whenever we update a slot, we are giving the button, the item um, slot UI button, we're giving it a an action. Okay. So the action here is defined in, let's go to our dynamic actions. Okay, so we have this base dynamic action, all right? This is the base object. It's a scriptable object that takes a generic type and does an action on it, okay? I'm calling an item action, so I'm passing in an item, a uh, number of that item, and then some extra info, an extra object, all right? Now in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and send in either the uh, player's inventory or the shopper. Okay, so when the inventory UI is, is on the uh, shop UI, okay, so we're using a different item action. We're using the sell to shop action. We'll see that here. So we pass in the item that we're trying to sell, the number of that item that we're trying to sell, and then we're passing in the uh, player. Okay. Um, actually, this is just the inventory. Um, so we're going to cast this object into an inventory, and then we're going to get the shopper uh, component from that inventory. And then using that component, we're going to sell the item. Okay. Now that's a little convoluted. It's not the best solution, and I'm going to try and come up with a better one. But this is pretty dynamic, and it's it's a little better that, to me than creating an enum where we say, okay, uh, inventory state or inventory type. Okay, this is a shop inventory, blah, blah, blah. If it's a shop inventory, do this action. If it's not a shop, okay. So I'm just going to plug and play with uh, these dynamic actions. All right. So the other uh, action, when we are just on our base inventory, Okay, so we'll take a look at that base inventory. So we pick up an item, I just click it and it does stuff. All right, so take a look at that here. It'll, um, obviously it removes it from the inventory and then it does whatever the item does. Okay, remember the item has that do item stuff. You guys plug in whatever you need to do on this. Okay, so that's pretty much um, everything. I'm going to link you guys to the part where I do the UI in a second video, okay, because that'll occupy a pretty decent amount of time, and um, it'll be a lot more specific to just the UI and how I plugged in all the uh, UI components, like uh, what goes on the shop UI script and the inventory UI script. All right, thanks a lot for watching this. I'll link everything in the description. All the assets that I use were free. I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe, like if you liked it, and um, make a comment for future comment that, uh, content that you guys want to see. Thanks a lot.